Hi, my name is Ilana Kembalozi. I'm a Ugandan. I work with the Initiative for Social and Economic Rights. Um, and we've been very actively engaged with the UPR right from the consultation to report writing and to advocacy and lobbying. We think the UPR is a very important mechanism. Um, it's another platform for us to raise issues that we've been working on through a variety of approaches like litigation and community engagement. We get an international forum to get those issues had and uh, to hear states recommend Uganda to, to work on these issues is really important because the UPR is a peer mechanism and there's been a lot of evidence that states are more likely to implement those recommendations. So we definitely think it's a valuable platform in addition to treaty body reporting and other ways in which we engage internationally um, to ensure the issues we're advocating for are hard uh, by the state. Um, the thing that worked, uh, that we thought was really effective for the UPR, was really um, engaging with uh, diplomats, either one-on-one -on -one or group presentations. Uh, by doing so with proper documentation, we made fact sheets that we thought were very effective. Uh, we work on economic, social, cultural rights, so there's a lot uh, of data that needs to, people need to understand a lot uh, of, of, of issues, uh, like percentages around financing and a lot of data, and the fact sheets help us make a very effective case for why uh, ESCR needs to be invested in by the state. Um, and because they because they had recommendations, it made this, I think, uh, our feedback was that it made it easier for the diplomats who were able to pick up recommendations that they thought were in line with their priorities and to be able to easily put them out there. Uh, we had made smart recommendations and we were able, some of those came through in the reporting. Um, so I think having written documentation with recommendations is very valuable in the advocacy and engagement to do with the difference. Yeah, I'm called William Agnolito. I'm the executive director of an organization called Life on Sun. We are based here in Uganda, particularly in the northern the uh, northwestern part of Uganda. Um, coming to speak about my experience with the uh, UPR, especially the first circle. Uh, actually, I was part of the team that went to Geneva when Uganda was going, uh, being reviewed for the first time. Uh, our experience there was quite interesting because we were able, with the help of civicars, engage with the different diplomats from different countries who were able to collect our views from the civil society perspective and take those views over to their respective countries so that they will use some of the issues that we raise during the review process. Something that we feel that was very, very uh, good because we achieved at the end of the day when uh, Uganda received uh, about 177 recommendations, out of that Uganda was able to uh, accept about 142, 43, if I can still recall. And for me, I thought that was a very, very good uh, thing that civil society in Uganda uh, did. If anything, I think largely why Uganda was able to accept that number of recommendations was because of the engagement of civil society, both with the government official prior to the, to the review process, as well as during the, uh, the time of the review process. And uh, when we came back to Uganda at that time, again we had an engagement now with other members of civil society organization to share with them what took place in Geneva. And I'm very happy from that time on, at least uh, most of the civil society organizations uh, are now aware of what kind of uh, human rights situations are in Uganda. And for me, UPR personally, I feel it is a very, very good kind of uh, initiative by the Human Right, uh, United Nations Human Rights Council. Because for the first time, you find that the different countries are able to come together and uh, out, uh, out of, uh, I mean, uh, due to the peer kind of engagement, they're able to speak freely and talk about each other in a free atmosphere. That at the end of the day brings a lot of change, uh, particularly influencing a particular government, how it should address the human rights issues and situations in a country. And then uh, uh, engagement uh, with the second circle of uh, Ugandan uh, UPR process. I think prior again to, the, to going uh, to Geneva on the 3rd of November 2016, 
I think a lot took place again on the ground among the civil society organizations, especially around the thematic clusters. Uh, our organization belongs to civil political uh, uh, cluster. We have been engaging, raising the issues right from the grassroots level and how they feed into the national level. Based on my experience of the first um, engagement in the UPRI circle, it was now possible for me to clearly identify which issues needed to be brought to the national attention, which issues needed to be uh, maybe solved at the local level, as well as even at the international level. As we conclude this circle, we need to immediately prepare and engage in the, for the next circle. So that's the most important and interesting thing about the UPR. My name is Peter Ogea Abola. I work for Children of the World Foundation as uh, the executive director. Uh, before the pre sessions, we had uh, a training on UPR um, information on how uh, the UPR works in Uganda, and it was conducted by LWF, Northern World Federation, in Kibu, and then later on in Kampala, where uh, Gilbert Nyango, the director, the regional director for UPR, came and take, took us through on how UPR works in, uh, in, in the country. So, uh, in that process, we went to Geneva, and then again we had a, a training uh, conducted by Hans and uh, uh, the colleagues. Uh, so, they took us through on how uh, to, to come up with the, the recommendations. The recommendation that is action oriented in nature, and then the uh, things to do with should because most of our recommendation was the government should do this and that. So it was, was not really smart enough. So in that process, uh, the following day, we presented the paper. Uh, after making the presentation paper, we, we, I was able to uh, send out uh, in the presentation to various state of missions in, uh, in Geneva and then back some in, uh, in Uganda. So on the 3rd of uh, uh, November, uh, we took the privilege, uh, since I work in the community level, at the grassroots level, and then many people are saying, oh, you have gone to Geneva, what is the relevance of that information to the common man in Kitgum, who is very far from the capital of Kampala, uh, eight hours drive, nine hours drive to reach there. And then I uh, said, so, oh yeah, what we do is the technology is around the corner, we organize the, uh, the LCD, uh, the video, the network is available. So we invited the district officials, the, the local council five, the chairman LC5, uh, the heads of departments, uh, CBOs, the clan leaders, religious leaders, over 60 people attended the, the live screening that took place in Geneva. And then we were watching how uh, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sam Potessa, was able to explain on the different uh, recommendations given by different uh, countries. And uh, later on, we went to, for a radio talk show in the evening where at Mighty Fire FM, a local radio stations, over 10,000 people listed us for that particular radio. And we got a very good response uh, calling from people there how they, some of this information they didn't know that okay can be able to go very far because the problem that they are having they thought it is their problem, no one knows about it and that was really something that it was a good feedback from that and then later on now um, we are here now for the implement the strategies on how uh, we can be able to move forward to work together with different stakeholders, the government on uh, the different strategies on how we can be able to move. So we are now developing the implementation plan. We hope it's going to be concluded well and then different stakeholders will be able to work on the recommendation. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Achaloi. I work for the Lutheran World Federation here in Kampala. Uh, the UPR process is important for us as an organization because it's a platform where we get uh, local voices of refugees that are in uh, very remote areas in Uganda to come to the national platform and also take it to the international level in Geneva. Uh, so we are grateful that such an opportunity exists because a number of times we just do service delivery, we give handouts, but this is a platform where we get to talk about human rights in the broader sense. 
so it's an important platform for us. And then the press session in Geneva is an important event. Uh, first and foremost, there is the training that is organized by the UPR Info, which uh, builds capacity and empowers NGOs to be precise, to prepare themselves, and not to be antagonistic with governments, because, I mean, you are a part of sometimes the implementing uh, agency with the government, so the need for that collaborative and, uh, and a good language. So the UPR uh, pre-session, the training itself is very good, but also the pre-session, it's a platform for an advocacy uh, for those that get involved, because not all organizations would have the capacity to reach all the UN member states uh, outside that arena. So it is that one meeting where you get to meet everyone and present your issues. And a number of times we have seen that delegates who attend the, the pre-session, sometimes the recommendations they make are word for word for those things that, those issues that were presented at the pre-session. So it's a very good platform for us. And then for the, the post-UPR workshop that we are holding now in Kampala, UPR does not end with acceptance of recommendations. So it's important that we lay strategies, we make plans, we engage government, we engage donors on how we shall implement those recommendations that have been accepted or, uh, or, or find ways of how we shall work with government and development partners to implement those recommendations. So planning is very important. Uh, my name is James, uh, James Nkobi. I work for Human Rights Network Uganda, which also hosts uh, the National Stakeholders Forum for the UPR, a loose coalition of organizations working on the UPR. Uh, this particular workshop has been very central to our aspirations as a forum because unlike before, it has brought us together as a group uh, of civil society organizations working under the UPR to collectively come up with uh, the best strategies of how we can uh, monitor the government's implementation program uh, as well as documenting it. And one peculiar thing with this particular workshop is also tasking us to come up with value addition. In essence, for the first time, uh, probably in gatherings, uh, civil society is being tasked to say, okay, what are you bringing on table? Uh, which is quite a new innovation, and in my view, it will ease our, our advocacy work because we come with something on table. Uh, there's a recommendation here, we are saying we are contributing this part. Basically, it is giving us uh, uh, an inkling of how to meet the government along the way, on the way, in the middle ground, not just only uh, criticizing and being on the, on the gate side. So I think it's been very, uh, uh, very, very good for us, yeah, even when you look at the attendance. Uh, also, what has uh, been intriguing in it is that uh, the work is done by the organizations uh, and, and for ownership. Uh, the, the, there is no overbearing, like, you know, it's, it's step by step. Everyone who is here is involved. It is intensive, but it is step by step. And the ownership and uh, the attribution of the fact that we did this work will definitely uh, do come out, which I think is a very good sustainability uh, agenda for UPR Info. The fact that it comes and you give the technical and then you take over and run. Uh, uh, the issue for sustainability and also incorporate it in your works. Uh, going forward, we, we, we are looking at uh, uh, trying to use these documents that we have got here to uh, undertake a program of, of monitoring implementation. Uh, interestingly, not only monitoring government implementation, but also us implementing, because remember we are coming with also action uh, issues that we are going to contribute to. So it's, in essence, we are going to be monitoring ourselves and also monitoring the government, which I think is a new uh, very interesting matrix and, and, and innovation and uh, uh, we think that uh, with these documents it's going to be uh, a very interesting uh, targeted and focused kind of uh, precise work. We're also looking forward to the bigger national 
a workshop with the government and other stakeholders where uh, with these documents, at least we shall not begin from scratch when we are discussing, we shall have some documents to begin with and say, guys, here we are, can you, can you meet us along the way? So I think uh, for, again, a very uh, a long time when you go for meetings, when you have nothing, we are debunking that and, and this time around we are saying, uh, here we are, meet us along the way, we have some documents that we can uh, adopt as one. So I think for me, uh, these are great innovations for this particular uh, uh, post-UPR uh, workshop for, for civil society in Uganda. Uh, my name is Galabs Aisha from the Muslim Center for Justice and Law. Um, I have loved the UPR, really loved this workshop for many reasons. One, I've loved it because it has shown that the women are a step ahead in the world. Because I've really appreciated the discussion about the women's rights, the women rights, and then the discussions on the vulnerable persons in Uganda in the world at large. I'm William Machol. I run an organization which is called Corruption Breaks Crusade, which is corporate in short. Uh, I first heard about UPR roughly one year ago when we had a uh, sensitization on it, which was done by Defend Defenders. Then we had a different session also with the Uganda Human Rights Commission in Guinea. And uh, all along we have been having meetings where we have been continuously sensitized and updated on what we, what we need to do as partners in the force to see that Uganda's human rights situation is uh, being followed up. Uh, we were able to come together to form clusters and uh, give a recommendation which was presented at the UPR session in Geneva recently. Uh, besides that, I also traveled to Geneva in September and was able to look at the mechanisms, uh, how the council was operating. I was able to listen or follow the sessions of UPR by Tanzania and uh, Sudan. So my impression of UPR is that it is something which is wonderful really. It is so wonderful that if it is fully followed up, it is fully taken up, especially if the citizens and the civil society follow it up, it will mean the best human rights observance for everybody and the government also will be put to task to continuously ensure that they take up their responsibilities to ensure that human rights are fully protected and everybody enjoys his rights as the international conventions say. So I think it is a very good instrument. My name is Tom Anangodu. I'm a clan leader and uh, I come from uh, Nankat Institution. Uh, it, is about, it was about uh, one and a half years or two years ago uh, that I first heard about UPR when hearing it uh, staff came to meet you know, civil society organizations in Langu, and I was happy to be one of them. At that time, they were trying to sensitize us for UPR and uh, work on uh, human rights. They were also trying to get delegates to come to Kampala to have a discussion uh, at a national level. And that was done, I think, last year uh, in outside of Pekana, where we were introduced to UPR you know, mechanisms. Uh, we had a wonderful time. We were led through examples of the work of UPR. Now, to me, I think the most important factor is that UPR you know, is a mechanism which encourages participating states uh, to, to take positive action on those areas which have been recommended by their, you know, partner, their partners. Uh, to me, the peer 
pressure sometimes can push states to you know uh, accept and implement those imp uh, recommendations which otherwise would have been left out. Now for us in the third world, I think this is very important because if you look at the history of human rights in the third world, basically they have been better off and I think this was part of the reason why UPR was initiated to review and uh, observe what is happening across the board and to bring all the partners together. Now, the practice of human rights in the third world countries were not well developed. I would say have not been well developed. Uh, and therefore, borrowing a leaf from the Western world from other developed societies where these issues are being refined and ex you know, experience have made them better. Now, is helping those of us in the third world countries to come and board. My hope is that after about two or three cycles, I think that we need for a review to be done to see how our participating countries have been able you know, to implement you know, what, what has been recommended so we can move forward in a better way. My name is Fami Language and I work for Ulu Women Economic Development and Globalization. And um, I think that what is really important about the UPR processes is because um, it is one of the tools that allow our civil society to uh, engage with the recommendation different, given by different countries, especially also to understand the performance of human rights indicators in our country. And I learned a lot through the processes of UPR, which is important for me, is that uh, I can engage and have a collaborative platform with government and also play complementarity roles. And I think that the processes also allow uh, significant planning and engagement for the next uh, years to allow recommendation passed to countries to be worked upon, but also to address what has been pending within the UPR recommendations and what appear as been noted in the recommendation. So that gives us uh, a broader uh, approach to work and ensure that what is still pending uh, accepted in the next UPR processes. What has worked well for me is to see the real issues in Uganda passed into recommendation by other countries. So I practically learned a lot that other countries understand what is happening uh, with human rights situation in Uganda. Uh, these recommendations are passed by international countries like Sweden, Germany, Iceland, and that is to say that what is happening in Uganda is not just a national issue, but it's a broader international issue. Yeah. So for me, unpacking this aspect during the UPR process review, even at Uganda level, really works for me to understand that we have other bodies that play complementarity roles and also support the fact that the state mandates uh, to work towards achieving the goals, especially human rights goals in this country, uh, is, is really what has worked for me. Because I found myself through the processes, uh, the issues I was struggling with in my own constituency is an issue that has been highlighted even at international level, which I know it is at global level.